Hello there, good afternoon everybody. Um, oh, we're busy already on um, on YouTube, or we're not from, who is first in there? Um, thank you very much, Sue. Um, and Elizabeth, hello from you in Hornsey, and Mary's in Paxos, hello. Um, Chili says Margaret today, sorry if I miss anybody. Um, hi Terry in Pennsylvania. Linda, hello Ruby Coco. Hi Alice, hi Amanda and uh, hot and sunny in Plymouth. You're lucky, Sheila, it's a bit breezy here. Um, waiting on the website, YouTube and here. Oh, you've got all three covered. Um, right, so I've got everyone on YouTube. I have everyone on, oh look, there we are on the website, but I can't see any comments. Afternoon, Jeanette. Sunny in Devon, lovely, I'm glad you're having some nice weather. Now I've got a few new fabrics to show you and um not, not not a lot today we've got loads more going on before saturday oh what to tell you about saturday um between now and saturday don't order any pre-cuts off the website please because we're having a sale um on saturday morning for two days so it's going to be a summer sale there's more than just the pre-cuts but if you're thinking about ordering fat quarters or any of the perfect pairs or the fabric bundles the canvas collections that we have put together for you uh, we're going to take 10 percent off everything for the weekend which means that if you're a member of the half yard club you're getting 20 percent off and that's only for one week we don't do sales very often so that's only for one weekend so that's that's coming up on saturday hello glow and deal and stacy and shirley and who's that in michigan hello duana in um indiana duana in indiana brenda in kentucky hello it's warm in chipping sodbury um carol's in outer banks <laughs> Dominica's been watching YouTube. Um, not yet, Linda. I'm still working on on outfits for the uh, for the dolls. Been a bit 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 manic here at Shaw Towers, have to say, for the last couple of weeks. But um, but we'll get there. Um, hello, Lisa in Dublin. Thank you very much, Anne. Leslie's in Newcastle. Hello to you. Just have just have me a quick coffee before it goes cold. Who's that? Make oh, Anna's making a child backpack. Um, sunny in wales oh linda welcome along to the half yard club 20 percent discount on pre-cuts at the weekend remember on my website um susan's in north carolina i haven't got a ditty susie today i haven't had time for a ditty over the last few days weeks years i've been i've been rather busy i need to um take a step back i think and and concentrate on ditties and ragdoll outfits um cloudy in litchfield says louisa uh, hi Anne in Australia and Joan in Washington. Guess what? They're back in stock. Uh, they're only eight pounds. Um, bamboo handles. We've been waiting for these to come in for weeks because we sold out in a day last time. I think it was on a Saturday when we launched them, um, but we've got them back in stock now. So if you want to, if you want to go and order before we sell out, because I don't think they're going to last the hour personally the, the, the way that these went last time they were so busy um if you're not sure what to do with them i did make a bag for you and i put the instructions on my blog so if you go to debbie shaw sewing it's only a really simple bag um debbie shaw sewing .com and then take a look on my blog and then you've got pictures and um, instructions on how to make a bag like that of course you can design your own bag and um the, the way the way that i did it actually it's really easy and i do explain that on the instructions so let me just do that um was to literally take uh, my paper or fabric if you dare to go straight onto it and let me just open that up So obviously allow a hem at the top, put your handle on about halfway down or from the edge of where the bamboo bits are here and draw around it. And that, that's all I've done, literally. Um, if you draw around the edge of it and then bring it in a little bit for your seam allowance, then when you hem this bit, your semicircle should be just the same size as the handle. And with this one, I found some embroidery thread, which is um, just the same color as the handle and literally sewed it on through the handles. Really, really easy. And on the inside, I colored the thread that was over the green with a green marker pen. 
um, and then ironed it to make it permanent and that's all that is it's as simple as that but because I used embroidery thread um, it's um, it's really strong as well you could use string or something like that if you've got a, 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 an embroidery needle with a big enough eye um, but you can have lots of fun making different shapes of bag with it you know on, if you look at, at this that's where your handle is going to be you could make more of a, um, a wide shape or a triangular shape or a square shape that's entirely up to you but that's the one that we've got on on the blog if you wanted to learn how to make that but if whoo if you want them then do be quick because um i don't think they're going to last very long this is one of the new fabrics what's in the box behind me did i just see i missed two th oh there you are kathy that or what's in the box is uh, is Maddie and the um, the little dragon from Half Yard Club. The actual box is your second project for the Half Yard Club this month. It's a toy box, but it's more about the um, the applique. There's six applique shapes, and they're all farm animals. Um, cats and dogs are farm animals, aren't they? There's a sheep and a cow, and a chicken and a pig, and a cat and a dog. And I'm thinking they'd be nice on um, on a freeze around a child's bedroom or on a helmet or tie bags, drawstring bags, clothing, blankets. Um, so using the mobiles, if you kind of mirror, mirror image them, you could make mobiles out of them. So the box is just one idea. It's more about the applique. And while you're there, and we're talking about Half Yard Club, let me show you the project that you're going to get tomorrow, or projects, because I'm spoiling you this month. So if you haven't seen it before, it's this one and oh that'd be nice in this i'll show you that fabric in a minute um i'm thinking gardening i should do more than think about gardening because looking at mine at the moment the grass is taller than me um <laughs> so it's i made it as kind of um, a gardening caddy if you will with pockets on the front and pockets on the sides and in the center it's got dividers that are velcroed in so you could have as many pockets or add more if you wanted to obviously you'd need more more fabric if you did that um but you can make the handles longer you could use it as a storage bag you could just use it as a tote bag but i'm thinking um summer projects and so this is coming out tomorrow because it's july the first tomorrow is it not and then i made an apron as well um thinking gardening again so it's got a gap in the middle so that if you're sitting or if you're kneeling as i should be doing those weeds um the apron doesn't kind of flop over your knee it sits either side so it's a bit like having a extra pockets on the side and there's two pockets in each one of those so these have both got videos there's templates for the pockets on this and you've got your step-by-step -step, step instructions so that's what's coming up on half yard club tomorrow and then the applique and the toy box will be on the 15th so that's that's that out of the way craft bag would be ideal wouldn't it heather or baby bag re um hi deborah and Lenas is that in Sweden? I'm very good, thank you very much, Gina. Um, hi, Margaret in cloudy Belfast. And Karen's in, is that Medina in Ohio? A pool or a beach bag, that would be very nice as well, sunny and pool. No news on the move yet, Sylvia. So we've missed the, um, the stamp duty deadline, which is today, which I'm a little bit miffed about, but there you go. These things happen for a reason. Sometimes you just don't know what the reason is. And when I find out, I'll think, that's why we shouldn't move when we wanted to. Handles don't seem to be there. Oh. Um, hmm. Let me, uh, if you, uh, excuse me a moment, um, because I need to text my daughter and ask her to put the handles on. That's entirely my fault, because I thought I did it can you make sure the handles are on the website please kiss okay so uh, sh i shouldn't do this should i, I shouldn't take over the website and try and deal with things because i'm a bit rubbish hello hasana in victoria like victorville in california and jeanette's in south africa how many have we got there then? 291 on Facebook, YouTube. We've been having a bit of competition between the two, haven't we? YouTube I can't see. 73, is that right? Or is that 100? I can only see the 73. If it's any more than that, I do apologise. And we don't know how many is on the website. 
Hello, Sarah. Thank you very much. Oh, there's messages, lovely. They don't always come up on the website for some reason. Hello, Princess Morning Star. Right. Susie in Ohio. Handles are there now, she says. So if you want to order, <laughs> go and do it now. They are there. Honestly, don't let me loose on that website. Brand new, well they're not brand new, these have been on for a couple of days actually, but I haven't shown you these before. Um, 182 on YouTube, oh we're catching up. Um, these are canvas, so they're nice and kind of thick. These would make amazing bags, I'm going to make a messenger bag out of one of them in just a second. Um, Hillary's in a van. Um, 140 wide and really lovely quality, so although we're calling them a canvas, it's not like the kind of canvas that you would... Um, paint on it's, it's a lot softer than that so I wouldn't make a garment maybe a jacket that would be about it um, but certainly for bag making for homewares for cushion covers for chair covers I just think these would be amazing and I love the designs so I wouldn't go for that one on its own because it has a partner look at that I just think they're beautiful and they're they're fun and classy and gorgeous colours. Silvery the purple is lovely, isn't it? Um, and I love it with the flash of the green in here as well because it also means it goes with the other set. I haven't got a, pull, a full piece of fabric to show you of this colour because I've cut into it. But see how those two go really well together as well. So you could mix and match all four of those. I say four because I haven't, I haven't shown you the others yet. Um, Oh, you know that chair that needs covering in the conservatory or you just want to bring a bit of life back into your dining chairs. Those um, chairs with seats that you can pull out and wrap your fabric around and staple them. This is perfect. It's a really strong fabric. So excited when I saw these. I, th I think I've told you before, I don't, I don't choose fabric for the website. That's my daughter's job. But it does come here first, and I get so excited. Um, we've, we've got, um, I think there's probably about 10 rolls of new fabrics that have just arrived as well that um, should be uploaded at some point in the next couple of days. It's taken so long, got so much. Um, but when these came, I just thought, oh, I like those. Um, so that's the purple colours. And then we've got these kind of acidic colours as well. This is what I'm going to make my messenger bag out of. And that, I think, looks beautiful with the blue one. Now, if you want to find them, um, if you go to the website to debbyshaw.com, debbyshawsewing.com, and um, just scroll down underneath the video that's playing and it'll say um, new, um, or search canvas, it'll, it'll come up there. I'm not sure how much they are, I'm afraid. Um, but do have a look at those. Now then. Waterproof fabric suitable for toiletry bags. I'm afraid we don't, oh, unless you use cork, cork's waterproof, but I'm afraid we don't do any um, at the moment. Hello, Julie Hind. Um, great invention casting, now I can watch you on TV. Oh, lovely, just chipped a nail. Um, Kim's sewing site. Kim, uh, Kim doesn't have, a, do you mean the, the website that you can buy things from is Debbie Shaw Sewing. Kim has a blog. Um, which is what Kimberly makes. I mean, I'm sure if you Google it, you'll find she's got um, a YouTube channel as well. We don't have any Julie, Julie rolls. We don't have any Julie rolls jelly at the moment, I'm afraid. <coughs> excuse me. Right. <coughs> oh, do excuse me where that came from. Oh. Hello, Lisa in Pennsylvania. June in Tennessee. Hello to you. Look at these. Staying with the same kind of colour theme, but this is fabric that's already quilted. Yes, I know. So it has a backing, it has wadding in the centre, and it's already quilted. I am going to be making on YouTube, what, what I'm doing at the moment with my YouTube channel, do you know, it's fun, oh, don't look. No, I shouldn't tell you, because you might not have found them yet. There are some very old videos on that YouTube channel because I started it 12 years ago, 13 years ago, before we had proper cameras or anything. Um, so they're very wobbly. And um, Jean, was, we sold out of the pre-order on Christmas fabric, I'm afraid it went on the day. Um, 
the rest of the fabrics and in fact the pre-orders as well will be here hopefully the second week in august everything's been delayed coming in from india and china at the moment it's been apparently a little bit of a nightmare getting um getting fabrics from anywhere at the moment so the, they're kind of on the way but it, it is delayed we were hoping they're going to be here next month but um it's not um i don't at the moment Anne, but i shall have a look at doing one of those um so yeah anyway on the on the um youtube channel there are some very embarrassing videos on there. Not as in I've made a fool of myself, but just um, not very good quality um, compared to what we do now. So I'm gradually going back and remaking them. And there was a pair of oven gloves on there that I made. I thought oh, I could do those again, but I just thought this fabric would work so well because it's already quilted. So I think what I should do is, um, oh, Michelle, please don't, don't tell anybody about those videos. Um, I'm still going to use some um, thermal wadding as well as that, so they're going to be nice and thick. But I do, I just love that, I love that quilted kind of look. And we've got it in blue as well. It's fun, isn't it? And it's, oh, actually, that would make a really nice jacket. You know, like the, the, um, the reversible kimono that we did in Half Yard Club, but not make it reversible just make the kimono and you don't have to line it you would need to put some bias binding i think on the seams on the inside because you'd see those um, but that would make a really nice lightweight summer jacket and you don't have to bother quilting it or lining it or padding it lovely stuff denise has been waiting six months for new furniture what are you sitting on then Oh, Amanda's seen some of the old... Oh. oh, now that's... Amanda, that's the one that I'm not going to to change. I, that's That was on the days when you first start on YouTube. They don't, they'll only allow you a, a certain amount of minutes. So, I mean, nowadays I could make videos for, you know, hours and hours long. Um, so I think that one's in about four pieces because that, that's all YouTube would let you upload. Um, but that's got Alfie in it, my old dog, who loved chairs. So I'd, if, if, you, if you haven't noticed on that one yet, I think it's just called How to Cover a Bucket Chair. Um, but every chair that I bring in, he sits on it. So he's sitting on the one I'm trying to cover. I, I, towards the end, I've actually put the cover on and sitting on it. So I'll bring him another chair in so he can sit on that chair while I'm covering this one. He just, he just loved a chair. So no, that, that one won't be replaced because um, I enjoy going back and watching him. He's an amazing dog. Um, old videos of children's tv sam there's a whole section on there i don't know if you've seen on my uh youtube channel i think that it's called uh, uh, the days before shopping tv or something like that and i put as many of the um videos of children's itv that i could find on there um sitting on chewy boxes what's a chewy box i haven't looked yet alan no i'm sorry i haven't had time um did you see the one crystal of um uh, me playing a recorder singing happy birthday <laughs> sewing happy birthday <laughs> sewing happy birthday playing happy birthday I don't know what I'm talking about um, playing happy birthday on a recorder and he was singing along to it it's funny wasn't it Susan he, I love that dog um, love all dogs but you know some are, some are special they don't know they're all special oh Bobbin don't listen to this um, hello Angie haven't missed anything yet haven't, haven't got into anything yet um oh thank you made the big tote bag with the sides in four versions you've been busy karen i'm going to make a messenger bag i'm a, I'm a little um at, um and i'm not uncoordinated unprepared this morning it's been rather a busy day today um right so i'm going to use this fabric because i love it and it's not going to be a reversible one because I'm going to put a pocket on the inside of this one. So what have I got? I've got two of those. I'm going to do two. Um, what I'm also trying to do, if I, if I can ever sew more days in the week, is to um, film what I'm making in the lives on YouTube as well. So the, I, know, I know we shouldn't pander to the complainers, but um, those of you that don't like the chat... <laughs> I'll try and do the projects again, but uh, it's just having time. having time at the moment. Okay, so I have cut two pieces of fabric that I'm going to use for the outer, which I'm using this one. I'm just ironing some H640. Oh, there we go. Onto the wrong side of it. 
and these measure 10 inches across this way and I just need to measure how deep they are and we're getting lots of steam out of that um, where's my ruler here we go so 10 inches across and that is 12 inches down and I've cut four pieces and that is fine so two for the outer and two for the lining all measuring the same then I've cut two pieces for a flap and this is going to have the fleece on the wrong side of the pattern piece so my flap is going to be a patterned flap and these measure nine inches across and seven and a half inches down I don't normally do half inches but there you go oops that was a squirt instead of a spray um. <laughs> she'd be very hurt Maria if she heard me talk in the back I wonder if she can smell him I bet they can you know because um, obviously we've still got the same furniture when we had the last dog so she does she knows there was another dog there before her I suppose so um, hello Lisa Fenn with a spanner we're making a messenger bag which I'm not very well prepared for <laughs> so I'm, ho I'm hoping it's going to turn out all right I've uh, been filming, um, in fact Kimberly's been filming this morning, she's got, she's got rather a large job on which has nothing to do with me, um, so I've just been, I've been her assistant today, so we've actually been into Stamford filming, um, so yes I didn't have anything prepared before we came back, so we'll be, we'll be fine, it'll work, it'll work, um, hello Pamela, in, is it Benela in Australia, is that how we say it? Um, Jeans fitting A-line seam pockets into a circle skirt. Who's on there? Oh, Sarah. Oh, don't be lonesome. I'm ignoring you over there. And thank you very much. Do we have the elastic using the child's backpack on the website as I can't find it? Um, we might have sold out of it, actually. There was in bundles of different colours, but um, it, was, it was very popular. Sarah, I'm moving you over here. So just, just bear with me. So there's Facebook and there's YouTube and then there's Sarah. Who's the only one on the website at the moment. Bless her. Um, Hasana, if you have a look on my YouTube, well, you're on my YouTube now anyway. There is a, um, what do I call it? Um, I think I called it a tote bag, but it's got lots of pockets all over it, pockets on the outside and the flap and everything. So that would make a nice diaper bag. I'll be fine, I'll be fine. Thank you. Susan, we've got to be fine. Right, let's figure this one out. So, there's the front, and there's the flap, and that's the back, that's the flap, and that's the lining, right? So I thought on the front, because the flap's going to be quite, not as long as I thought, um, I thought we might do a zip pocket behind the flap. Just one of those letterbox type of zips I think we're going to do. Uh, Marilyn, I'm in inches at the moment. I, I will be doing this again um, for YouTube and I shall put the measurements on the screen for that one in centimetres and in inches, but this isn't inches at the moment. Um, I, haven't, I haven't got a model of what I'm sewing today, Karen, because I've made it yet. Um, so, outside and lining, 10 inches, 12 inches, two of those, two lining, and then the flap is 9 inches, 7.5 inches down. So, that's going to be like that. That's the back of the flap, and that's what the front of my bag is going to look like. I'm going to round the corners off on here as well, and I'm going to fasten it with a magnetic snap. So I can do that first of all. So I'm just going to fold this to find the center point. And this is that new canvas that we've got on the website. So it's nice and sturdy. And I'm going to take the thinner part of the snap and put it on this bit. 
I'm not going to reinforce the fabric because I don't think it's going to need it. So this is going to go about an inch from the bottom there. So don't put the clasp too close to the edge because it, when it comes to being sewn in or top stitched, you don't want to, you don't want your presser foot to be too close to the clasp. Um, so that's going to go there. So I've made a little mark either side. Then I will need my quick unpick, which I can't find. Oh, here we go. And just make a little hole in each side of here. Not too big, so be careful with that one. You could use a very sharp pair of little scissors if you prefer to. Push the prongs through there. Fold it over. And the back goes on. Uh, oh, Fiona's on the website as well, loving the new material. Thank you very much. Susan's on the website. Oh, thank you. Sarah thought she was on her own. So that goes on like so. Hey, Bob. Hello. Hello. Are you outside in the sunshine? Are you? Um, and then I'm going to round off the corners of this one, I think. I was in two minds whether to kind of do it an asymmetrical one, but I don't think it's long enough. So let's pop these two together like so. Then I'll need something kind of round, which could be a ribbon reel. And I'm just going to draw, oh, that wasn't very round. Draw around here and around this one and then cut the shape out. Like so. You didn't have to do that, I just think it looks nice. Right, and then we'll sew these two pieces right sides together. And I'm just using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Nice and curvy around the curves. Just line those edges up. I'm not worried about pinning on these. That's why I don't put the clasp too close to the, um, to the presser foot. But if you do do that by mistake, then simply put your zipper foot on the machine, then you'll be able to sew closer. And back down the final side. And then we'll turn this the right side out. Janet, I'm, I'm like her assistant at the moment. She's um, on fire with all the sewing and the work coming in. It's brilliant, really proud of her. Let's turn this the right side out. Oh, wow, oh, I didn't know you got me book, Lisa. Um, making some face cleansing pads. Oh, sell them. Put them on your Etsy shop. Um, toweling and cotton fabric arrived this morning. Lovely. Keeps you busy. Let's just push this out. Oh, missed a bit there. I'm going to go back over that bit. Has the angle of the overhead camera? Is it me? Oh, sorry, Helen. I'm blaming my daughter again because she's been filming in here and that's the angle that she uses. So I shall try and um, hold things up so you can see what I'm doing. It has changed a bit. So it's all going to change again when we move. I'm going to have to be filming from inside the house for a bit. Right, so that's that. And that's that. Press that out. Looking nice. And I'm just going to top stitch around the edge. Now, given more time, I'd use, I'd, I'd find that colour blue, but I haven't got any today. So let's uh, increase the stitch length to a 2.8. <laughs> right, and just go around the edge. I quite like the, the face pads of the fabric on the back as well, Lisa. Um, the only thing then is you can only use one side of them, can't you, I suppose? But the towel, we've got... Um, in fact, we sold out of the white bamboo toweling, but it is on order. Um, so it should be here maybe today or tomorrow. But we do have the pink and the and the blue bamboo toweling on the website, which is so soft. If you're making face wipes, 
it's so very very soft and bamboo is an amazing fabric because bamboo if you're not aware is a grass so it grows like grass and as you mow grass it grows back again so does bamboo um, it doesn't need pesticides it's antibacterial and it makes the most incredibly soft fabric so we've only got the uh, the toweling on the website at the moment but it is amazing and it's by the half meter as well so if you wanted to make something like a toweling robe you can there's enough for you to do that that's my flap finished like so oh we do have a bit of cork left as well um I think we've still got some of the quilted cork, which I haven't, well I have, it's right, I can't reach it. Um, hello Dibber Welch. Um, and we've got some of the printed corks as well. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get any back because cork is just, people have gone crazy for cork at the moment. Cork's another one of those incredible fabrics, it's like a dream fabric. It's waterproof, um, you can use it as a lining on a bag, it's soft enough to sew through. It's sustainable, it's plentiful, um, doesn't use pesticides again. It's um, an amazing fabric, washable. The only thing don't do with cork is put a hot iron on the top of it. Um, if you catch it with an iron, it's not going to melt, but don't put prolonged heat on the top of it. It goes a little bit lumpy. Tried the old crystal's got her bamboo fabric, lovely. Got thread in me coffee now. Rubbish, right. Let's do the zip in the front of this. So that's the front. That's the flap. So just to gauge where I'm going to put the zip. Um, obviously the flap's going to go on the back of the bag, but I want to give it a little bit of room to actually go over. So I'm going to leave that about an inch there. I'm not putting the second half of the magnetic snap on yet. I'm just trying to figure out where I'm going to put a zip pocket because I want it to be hidden underneath here. So I think if I put the pocket about three inches from the top, so let's have a look how far something like that is. So then maybe four inches, maybe there. So then I've got enough room to put my clasp, close the snap and I can still get in the pocket okay. So let's measure that properly and see where we're going to put it. I know, share. Um, I've got the machine back for just a little while because um, Kim's up here filming. And in fact, she's filming at the moment in the house on my machine. So we needed to. So she will have it back again. But for the moment, it's mine. It's mine. Because I still haven't got another one yet. That's lining. Was that pocket? I was going to put a patch pocket on the inside as well. That was pocket right and I'll have the contrast fabric that can be for the next bag so for the, the zipped pocket this measures 10 inches across so it's the same width as the bag and it is I love the go Denise um, 17 and a half inches long so 10 across 17 and a half down and that's literally going to wrap around and, and make the pocket on on the inside um so first of all i'm going to need to so that'll go there how am i doing it that goes around there and that goes around there so that that'll do um i'll explain what i'm doing in a sec so from the top of the pocket piece is two and a half inches and I've put that one inch from the top. So does that make sense? So two and a half inches, put the lining piece one inch from the top and then measure two and a half inches on the lining down that way. And my zip is knocking around here somewhere. Maybe over here. Just got to graze it, which is too long, but you, you know what we like, I like to cut it down. So let's square that up and I'll have a couple of pins in there just for now like that and I don't want the zip to go all the way across I'm going to come in by about an inch and a half each side so I need to draw coffee, a box darling. I would love a coffee thank you very much what about your friends don't ask us the all want one you know what they like 
going to draw a box half an inch wide. I'll show you this close up in a sec. And that's seven inches long. Is that seven? Seven and a half inches long. So that's my box. So remember, two and a half inches from the top of here, and that's an inch from the top there. And I'm going to draw a line straight down the centre of this box. That's not quite straight. Let's do that. Lisa will have a black one. Sam, I use an Olfa 12 by 16 ruler. There's lots of different brands of rulers, but I like a 12 by 16 one. I've got smaller sizes as well. Um, I like to use the little four and a half inch one for smaller projects. I've got a nine inch and a 12 inch, but that, uh, that's the one that I use most of all. Right, I'm just going to redraw one of those lines because that doesn't look quite straight to me. There. I'll just rub that out. So I've got a seven and a half inch box. That's going to be a hole for my zip to go in. I've drawn a line straight down the center and then I've made a V shape that go into each corner. So what I'm going to do now is to just sew all the way around the edge of that box. And I'm going to shorten the stitch because I'm going to turn this through in just a second. And I want that seam to be nice and strong. So this is going to be the shape of the hole where the zip goes. So make sure your stitch lines are straight Stop with the needle down at the end. One more stitch, turn around and try and keep right on that line that you've drawn as well. So you've got a perfect half inch box. Let's move that out of the way. And down to the other corner, needle down, turn around, back up again. And over a little bit and back down from where we came then take your scissors <coughs> and I'm just going to cut straight down the center of that line that I drew it's quite thick now and snip into the corners so not through the stitches but close to the stitches like so then we'll bring up the ironing pad again and turn this all through so i've got the big iron with me at the moment instead of the little one because i wanted to use steam but that little one would have been a bit better i think for this but there we go so i like to iron the fabric away from the seam first i just find it easier to do so and then we're going to coast all of this lining fabric through the hole I call this a letterbox zip I think it's a placket and fold through Lynette I hold fingers flat on the ruler as I'm cutting so with a rotary cutter and that tends to stop it slipping and it keeps your fingers away and it keeps everything nice and flat because we don't want the ruler twisting when you're cutting um, if you have um, oh what are they called you can get some uh, like little gluey dots that go on the bottom of your ruler to stop it from slipping I can't remember what they're called and those are quite useful or of course some some rulers are actually non-slip like the is it um, Omni grid, is it? Right. Now, if I'm careful, so I'm going to press all of that now, I might be able to just roll the seam so I can see a little tiny bit of the lining coming through without it affect affecting the seam allowance. So again, let's just roll it very slightly. I don't want to spoil the shape of the pocket but it's quite nice to see kind of like the outline there. And then let's pull out the corner. Ah, it's hot. Uh, Karen, sometimes use a hand wipe. That's a good idea on your rollers. Uh, recently watched one of Debbie's videos instructing children. Oh, I've got my um, eldest granddaughter coming over at the weekend and I'm going to teach her how to sew. She <laughs> She made a bag um, using paper and sellotape 
um, and was really pleased with herself. So I thought, that's it. That's it. This girl should be sh should be sewing now. So um, that's my plan for this weekend: teaching a six-year-old to sew. So I've got that. So now we're going to put the zip behind it. And again, my zip zip's too long. So let's. I'm not worried about this kind of puckering out. That that happens sometimes. It will it will straighten out and be flat. But that's if it. If it's going to pucker up, it tends to pucker up on the inside where it's not seen. Let's just give it a bit of a press. But as long as ah, as long as the outside's nice and neat, it will put ow. <laughs> Why do I keep doing this? I'll give it a bit of a spray of breast press. That's better. That's a bit neater. Okay. I'm going to pop a little bit of glue around the hole to keep this in place. I know Lisa's six years old. And it's just a um, fabric glue stick, so this will disappear after a while. But it's quicker than pinning. And then we'll place the zip down. I'm going to open it up a little bit. And just place that over the hole. I'll close it up a little bit actually. There we go. So just give it a couple of seconds for the, the glue in the stick to become tacky, but that means that we can kind of maneuver this around and make sure that the zip's sitting nice and centrally. I'll press that crease out in just a second. Um, so we have that. And then we sew all the way around the outside of the box. Um, the glue pen Selma is one that we've got on the website if you've got stock. And it is a sew line fabric glue pen. They come with a refill as well. And it's, it's blue when it goes on the fabric. It dries clear and it washes away as well. So it's, um, but it's handy for things like this because it's, it's easier than trying to work around pins. Just move the needle over a little bit and sew in a box all the way around the edge. So if your uh, slider gets in the way as you approach it, leave the needle down as you manoeuvre this out of the way. And literally round in the corner. It always brings me a, a, a cuppa, Sarah. You don't ask, I'll just get one. Right, Toby's 10 years old. Back down this side. Move that out the way and carry on. And then across. There we go. I did snip into the corners, actually, Iris. Maybe I just didn't get quite close enough to the stitches. So that's going to be the pocket and I'll just snip those threads off. Hello, Laurie Michigan. And then I can cut the ends of the zip down to size. So don't leave this so long that you're going to interfere with the seam allowance. So that's that. Then I'm simply going to bring up the bottom of the pocket to the top and sew across there. You won't see those raw edges because those will be on the inside of the bag. So I'm only th sewing through the pocket pieces, not over the actual bag. I'll show you that in just a second, so bear, bear with me. I love the glue pens, Patricia. I, I use them an awful lot. So we have that. I haven't sewn at the sides because that's going to be in the seam of the bag because the pocket goes all the way from one side to another. So the top of the pocket's loose, the bottom's loose, and that's going to be the front of the bag. In fact, what I am going to do is just to put a few tacking stitches just to stop that flopping around as I'm sewing it. So just in the seam allowance there and here and on this side. 
So you won't see those stitches, it's literally in the seam allowance just to hold those all in place. Hello, Lauren, Oklahoma. So we've got that. Um, let's, oh, let me show you the inside as well because I've got the contrast on the inside, which is quite nice too, isn't it? So let's put the front and the back of the bag together. Now you could go to town here, you could be putting um, another pocket on the back, another pocket like that on the back would work well too. So it depends what you're going to use your bag for, but you could really go to town with, with pockets and things all over the place. Um, so I'll have a few clips in this one because it's getting quite thick now. And I'm just going to sew around the bottom three sides and leave the top open. I'm going to put the flap on first, aren't I? So the flap goes onto the back of the bag. And just make sure that you've got the right sides together. So when that folds over, the magnetic snap is on the bottom side. So that's going to go centrally into the back like this. I could have done it that way, actually, couldn't I? So you've got, a, but I didn't, I did that. Um, so that goes in the center. And we'll just sew across there and keep it in place. Long stitch, it's only a tapping stitch. So your walking foot might come in handy now because we've got quite a few layers of fabric. And I'm just sewing really, really close to the edge. No work to, oh, Laurie, you don't need to do housework today. Then we'll have these two pieces right sides together. And I was clipping that, wasn't I? And we'll just sew around the bottom three sides. Hello, Mary in Virginia. And I'm still just using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'll take my stitch length back down again. I think that's fine on a bag of this kind of size. Oops, that's crumpling a bit. This is why I should have put my walking foot on. I'm just going to move that over a little bit. Kind of went a bit wobbly there. That's better. Right, I need to undo where I put the tacking stitches in the bottom of that pocket because it's um, stretched a little bit. That's better. So down into the corner. Needle down and across the bottom. More in more rag. Hello Claudia in Los Angeles. What's your weather like over there today? Well, a little bit overcast, but it is quite warm still, which is nice. It's nice dog walking weather when it's like this, not too hot. Helen's painting the garden fence, whoa. Let's hope the rain holds off for a while. Hello, Maxi. Max, Maximum Satan? Not a real name, surely. Hello, Patty in California. And Michael in Perth. Very hot. So, sewing around the bottom three sides, so we have this. And shall we box the corners? I think it'd be rude not to, wouldn't it? So, I'm just going to squish the side seam so it sits over the base, like so. You can feel where the seams meet. And I'm just going to sew about an inch from the top here, straight across there. You could measure that. Um, right, Sharon. Try, if you try to change the needles, try changing your thread. Just experiment on different types of fabric. Um, have you re-threaded? Um, skip stitches can be caused by all kinds of things. It could be... It could be tension, but not caused by the tension dial. It may be the thread's pulling somewhere. So just check the route that your thread's going down to the needle and make sure things like um, 
the label on the top of your bobbin, you know, the sticky bit isn't catching on, on the spool holder and slowing things down or pulling it tight. Just make sure everything's running smoothly. Make sure that your feed dogs are clean. So it might be if you've been doing a lot of sewing, take the throat plate off and get a little brush with your machine switched off for safety reasons, of course, and, and just clean out the feed teeth so that they do actually get a grip on the fabric. Um, but if you change in the, yeah, try changing your thread, uh, even to a different brand of thread, that may help as well. Um, and are you using the right needle for the thread? If you're using a universal needle and all-purpose thread, then you sh should be fine for most projects. But if you're doing anything specialist, then do make sure that you've got the right needle and thread for the job. Can't think of anything else. Anybody else got any ideas about skip stitches? Off the top of my head, that's all I can think of. So do, do post if you've got any hints and tips. Um, I, th I think I can make that one out, Yadith. Loves the combination of colours. And thanks for something or other. Thank you for commenting, that's really sweet of you. Thanks, Sarah. They work really well, don't they? <laughs> Send him round or her round. Terry doesn't need training, he just he's just lovely. Just does stuff. New needle for I think she tried a new needle. Um yeah. The, well, you'll sort it. I'm going to chop these corners off now. And then we'll turn this the right side out. And then we can mark the position of the second half of the magnetic snap. So I haven't made the base too deep. It could have even been a little bit narrower than that, to be honest because um, a cross body bag like this sometimes you wear them underneath your jacket so we, we don't have them too bulky so that's what we're looking like so now I need to mark the position of the second half of the magnetic snap and I do it at this point just so I know it's in the right place so don't make this too tight over the top I'm going to have handles on the side here as well or a strap so I don't want it too tight as it pulls over and so it's going to actually sit just below the zip um, maybe the zip should have been a little bit higher. Never mind, there wasn't a plan for this. Just kind of developed this one. So let's measure this to make sure it's in the centre. That's spot on. And then we'll take the second half of the magnetic snap. Yeah, I could maybe put that a little bit higher. I'll do that on the YouTube one. Now that now I've done my practice and we'll make the holes in here now we don't want to take this through the pocket so i'm moving the pocket out of the way and just make my little snips in here so the one that i'm going to make for youtube i don't know when i'm doing that it might not be till the weekend because rather busy at the moment um but that's going to be the reverse of this one so it'll have this is the main part of the bag and that one is flat and i can just about get two bags out of um, half a metre of fabric but I can I, I'll show you what I'm doing with the strap actually because I did use like every little scrap of fabric for both of them so I've already got the second one cut out but I won't have enough for a strap for that one so that one will probably have a webbing strap instead so let's do that pocket back down again fold over and that's how we're looking so that's kind of got a, a secret pocket behind the flap which I think is quite Right, nice. So let's do the lining. So I've got two pieces of lining fabric. And this is just, I'll just do one pocket because I can save that for the other bag then. So I've got two pieces of fabric for the pockets. This is just going to be a patch pocket. So those measure 10 inches across and six inches deep. And I'm going to sew those right sides together to make a tube. And so you, to make it even slimmer, Susan, if you just um, if you didn't box the corners, then that would be a two-dimensional bag. So again, I'm just sewing the top and the bottom because this is the same width as the bag. So again, the ends will go into the side seam. same across here then 
and we'll turn this through. I'm using Fiona 14 millimeter, uh, sorry, 18 millimeter magnetic, magnetic snaps. I'm not sure if we have stock at the moment. If we don't have stock now, we will have stock when I just come off air because I know that we've had a delivery of magnetic snaps. The 14 millimeter ones are on there and they'll be absolutely fine if I've got any here to show you the difference in size. No, I've only got 18. No, I've only got 18 ones here. I, I know we've got 14 in stock, definitely. Um, but the rest of them, so if they're not there now, they will be there later on. Okay, so this is my pocket. I've sewn it into a tube and I'm just going to roll it so I've got a border of that across the top because I think that's a nice finishing touch. Um, so let's give that a quick press. Dog walking bag would be a good idea. With a grommet would be good as well. I ought to do that, hadn't I? I have to, I, well I don't have to, I take cheese with me when I go walking Bobbin. She will do anything for cheese. She's so well behaved, she sits, she comes back, she'll allow other dogs to walk straight past her and not even bother as long as I've got cheese. It makes me look like ever such a good dog trainer. Um, so there's poo bags and cheese in mine. Um, that goes there. Have you got your bamboo handles? If you just joined us, I want, I'm, I'm just, I don't want to bash on about them. But I've had so many questions about these handles and they've literally come back in stock today. Um, I think they'll sell out by the time we finish this sesh, personally. So if you, if you didn't see earlier on, we've got handles on the website. They've taken weeks to come back, so um, make the most of it. And let me remind you again, on Saturday and Sunday, just for two days, we're having a pre-cut sale on the website. I'll tell you why. <laughs> we need to make room. We've got we've got so many rolls of fabric. I mean, there must be ten in the house at the moment, um, all ready to be uploaded onto the website. And these things are huge. So we're having a bit of a shifty round in the warehouse, and um, we want to reduce the amount of pre-cuts that we've got because we've got. Uh, I was going to say hundreds. We've probably got thousands of them. Um, so we thought we'll have a summer sale. Let all mind you, I'm saying that Kimberly's been buying fat quarters in, so it's going to be ever so busy. We haven't got enough, so we, we do have brand new fat quarters on the website that will be in the sale on Saturday. Um, so any of the half meters, the perfect pairs, and there'll be other some bits and bobs in the sale as well. I think she's going to do a whole sale section on the website, but just for two days, just over the weekends, and um, it'll be a 10% off. So the 10% will already be taken off. You don't need a code or anything, but if you're a Half Yard Club member and you still use your code, that means you get 20% off. Worth joining the club, isn't it? It's only 5 99 Right, so that's my pocket on there. So I'll have it about, about halfway down. Remember, I'm going to square the base, so I'm going to lose about an inch from the bottom. So we'll have that about there. So that will be the handles. Oh, they've gone, Brian. Oh, I'm sorry. They weren't quick. I knew they would. All right. Let me let me send her a text. Um, can you order more? Keeping it, she's filming, she's been busy at the moment doing her own stuff, so but she'll hopefully she'll order some more. Um, oh, thank you. Oh, no, you're not talking to me, Sam, but thank you when you want. I'm taking that one. Um, right, so I'm going to has she messaged back? She's already ordered more, <laughs> she's on the ball, my girl. I'm going to mark the center of this because I'm going to make a dividing pocket down the middle. Now, you can do as many as you like. Um, how wide was that? 10 inches, so that, that's five. So if you wanted to um, make a pen pocket, you can maybe do smaller lines down here. Um, you could put another zip pocket on the inside if you prefer. 
And let's sew straight across the bottom to hold this in place first of all. Handy for a phone size, I think, this one. And there. Not a problem, Beverly. Hopefully we've still got some fabric left. Just going to sew right over the edge here just to hold those in place. And then I'm going to sew down the centre of the pocket. I like to sew from the bottom of the pocket upwards because I found sometimes when you sew from the top down, if the fabric moves at all, you get a tiny little pleat right at the edge. So I always, I always go this way. So reverse stitch at each end, particularly at the top. Make that nice and strong, like so. So let's take those pins out and I'm not ironing on the table, I'm just using a bit of heat to take the pen away. There we go. So we have that. It looks like I love this fabric, I have to say. And, and you know, I don't know, I don't know if I saw that in the shop, I'd, I'd fall in love with it like I did when it actually arrived and you see all the different colours together. If I just saw that on its own, I don't know what to do with that. But when you see all the other fabrics that, that match and the fact that, where's the other one gone? Dropped it. Um, there's four of them that all go together really well. Then I start th thinking, well, if I've got two fabrics, I can make the contrast bag and the contrast pocket. Or if I'm making a cushion cover out of them, I could maybe have some, what colour is it, dark purple, navy blue would, would work well, um, piping and have uh, a, a thin border at the top. I've, I've got any of those around, have I? And, um, and then the base in a, oh, Madison bag. I just noticed one down there. We've got loads of Madison frames in stock. That's something we're not selling out of just yet. Those would make a lovely Madison bag. Um, thank you, Jane. Right. So that's my pocket. And again, you can put one on the other side. I'm, I'm being quite mean with the fabric for this one because I want to make another bag. Um, and I was saying earlier, I've, I've just got enough to make two complete bags, but only one strap. So if you're going to make lots more pockets, if you're following this pattern, then um, you might need a bit more than half a metre of each fabric. So just like before, I'm going to sew these right sides together around the bottom three sides, and then we'll box the corners. Part and parcel by the way. See, that's, I, I like the live bit. Um, I think it's very different to like the tutorial videos that I do on YouTube where I just try and put as much information as I can and if I can put graphics on there to explain things more than I will do and you don't see so much face it's more about the actual demo but the chats are a bit different aren't they and, and I I enjoy both but I like I like the lives better to be honest because it's nice to have the feedback and the interaction and it is I, you know I know I can't hear you um, but it's like having you all here and I, I, I like that um, the pig thing, Myra, is a toy box. That's the secondary project from the Half Yard Club this month. But there's six pieces of applique for it. So if you don't want to make a toy box, you've got some, I think they're really cute appliques, uh, farmyard animals that you can use for, that make a nice drawstring bag or a PE bag or backpack or something like that. Thanks, Lynn. Um, I'm just boxing the corner in the same manner as I did the outside of the bag. So I'll show you that in just a sec. Thanks, Chris. That's that's really nice. Not really. You know what I mean. It's really nice to hear from you, and we're glad that you're there, and we're glad that sewing's done something to help. That's what's really nice. Not the situation that brought you to sewing in the first place. Glad you like the lives, Maria. Well, it's nice that we can do both, isn't it? Because a lot of people don't. I do, I do get comments, <laughs> which made me smile, actually. What somebody said the other day, it would have been better without the yatter. Yeah, that's a good word, isn't it? Yatter. Um, so I'm going to try and do both. You have, to, you have to try and please people, don't you? Um, right, even though these are free. That I'm not saying anymore. I'm not saying anymore. So that's just the same as the outside of the bag. Now I've box the corners 
let's make the strap before we put this together now out of all of the fabrics so again i'm going to make another bag at some point which will be kind of the reverse of this one so the outside of the bag is that and then the flap is going to be in just the lime green so i've used every scrap of two half meters and i was left with this and that's all i've got left to make the strap with so i, I don't I, I don't know what I'm going to do for that one. I might just use some more fabric. Um, so I need to cut these to the same size, which will be that one. So that's three and a half centimetres. I would have liked that to have been four inches, sorry, not centimetres. But three and a half is all I had left. So three and a half is what we're going to work with. Um, sorry, I lost my pen. I'd normally use my rotary cutter, but by the time I've got it all out, to do here, I may as well have just cut it. We have got these scissors back in stock as well, by the way. So again, that's that's all I'm left with. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with that. So I'm going to join these together, and it's going to be kind of a, a half and half strap, which I think will work really well. And uh, I'd like to say I planned that, but I didn't. I'll measure how long these are going to be as well. I normally like a strap to be <laughs> um, about 30 inches long is a good length, I think, for shoulder strap. So this one is actually 20, 40 inches long. I need to press it. So I'm just going to press the long size to the centre, like a piece of ice binding. So if I could have done, or if I'd have got a little bit of extra fabric, or maybe made the bag a little bit smaller, um, I like these straps to be four inches wide. Oh, come on, open up. And then when you fold them, you end up with a one inch wide strap, which is nice and handy if you're using hardware, like D-rings and things like that, because they tend to be an inch. But I'm not using hardware on this one. Although with a crossbody bag, it may be quite nice to put a slider on there so that you can adjust the length of the strap. So then we'll take the long sides and fold to the center and we'll do that all the way down both sides and then we'll fold it in half so i've got quite a nice sturdy strap that doesn't need any kind of interfacing remember this is canvas that i'm using so you don't need interfacing for something like this it's it's quite firm enough particularly when it's folded into four pieces so let's do this one no, 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 Chris, Chris, it's not a stash. It's a collection. We're fabric collectors. It's, it makes it sound a lot more important than stashing, doesn't it? So no, we, we don't have stashes, we have collections. <laughs> Lisa's got a big rooms full. You just moved into your sewing room upstairs last time I saw you. That was a few years ago, wasn't it? Thank you, Lynn. Well, I'm kind of thinking if you don't like it, don't watch it. Right, and then all of this goes in half again. So again, it's just like a big long piece of bias binding. So long edges to the centre and then in half again. So I've got a nice, neat strap. <laughs> Willow's got a mojo back. You don't blame me, Lisa. It's not my fault. Happy to take the blame for that one, though. It is quite easy, Denise. I must, must admit, I've, I've made quite a few bags in my time. It must be going into the thousands now. Um, and a lot of it is very much the same. The boxing of the corners, the fitting of the pockets. A fabric library! <gasps> I like that, Erica. Oh, I have a fabric library. Now. I don't have a collection anymore. I have a fabric library. I like that. Oh. Mind you, don't, with libraries, don't you have to lend people things? I don't lend anybody anything. Yeah, then you could have your red chapter and your pink chapter and your green chapter. A volume of canvas. 
collection grew. <laughs> I, Patricia, I'm, I'm not complaining, you're keeping me in business. Hello from Collingwood, Ontario, Brenda. She's got collections in collections in totes. If I used earrings and swivels, I could share the strap. That would be an idea, Glenda. I could that mind that the strap's only be twenty inches long then. There are ways around it, I'm sure. I'm just gonna go get some extra fabric from the shop. Hello, Ramali in Sri Lanka. Welcome back again. Nice to see you. Um, oh, Sarah, you've disappeared off the website. That'll never do. Where are you? Supplies on the naughty stack. Oh, oh, we, we don't, oh, two dogs crazy for cheese. Sorry, Sarah, I missed you again. You're going to be all lonely on the website. I miss those. Um, an index of cotton. Nice one. It makes it sound um, a little more acceptable, isn't it? When we're, we are serious fabricators after all. So these things are the tools of our trade and they are necessary in our collections. And <laughs> never, I'll tell you what, Audrey, I've never sewn my finger. I have got a little bit too close to that, um, the, the, the screw that holds the needle in place, the needle clamp, and that's, that hurts when it bashes on your fingers. So avoid the right hand side. I'm not worried about an ooch, Patricia, it's wobbly stitchy, which is probably worse than an ooch, to be honest. How do you declutter fabric? Decl no, well, fabric isn't a clutter, you see, so there's no need to declutter it, is there, really? It's um, it's a, it's a, it's a necessary part of our collection. A bucket of bobbins. That's a nice long strap, actually, isn't it? And again, it's two tone, which I think does actually work rather well. So this is going to go facing down onto each side of the bag, right over that side seam. And around this side, wrong bo right, yeah, have a look at wrong bobbin. Skip stitches, wrong bobbin. If you've got more than one machine, it's easy to get them mixed up and they don't tend to cross over. Mind you, I have found that Singer fit Brother okay, from what I've seen. Obviously, Elinor and Janome are the same company, so they tend to go really well together. There's a how much of a beginner I don't want to sound um, patronising, but I do have some uh, videos on YouTube um, for children um, going right back to how to use the sewing machine. So they're really, really basic. But if, if you are that much of a beginner, there's a very simple tote bag, there's a cushion cover on there, things that you could make if you've never ever sewn before. There is a tour of a sewing machine on there as well. It's only a basic sewing machine, but that's probably the, the kind of thing that most people start with. Um, but it is made for children. But again, a, a very complete beginner, you might, that might be okay for you. Um, but I, I like bags. I, I would recommend a bag, maybe not with the zips and the pockets and everything. Have a look at one, it's, I think it's just called a simple tote. One of my videos. It doesn't have pockets or anything. But when a, a tote particularly, when you've got no fastenings, there's no zips, there's no darts, it doesn't have to fit, you're sewing straight lines, it can be any fabric. Those are the kind of things I think are good for a beginner and they can be quite quick as well. So you can achieve something in a short period of time which is going to spur you on. You know, if it's going to take you a fortnight to make something and you're brand new, you're not going to carry on, are you? Um, but I, I think things, simple small bags, makeup bags and that kind of thing. When you realise how easy it is and how quick you can do something, could maybe spur you on to doing something a little bit more complicated. I've sewn those handles to each side, facing down over the seam. And let's drop this inside. I want to make sure that the pocket's on the back of the bag, because I, I think that's easier to get into. And we'll push the outer bag inside the lining. Oh, good. I'm glad you like them, Chris. I, I, I must do more. 
I say it's just time. A basket for Lego stories, that's a good idea. Or you could use the toy box behind me, but a basket's a nice idea. Oh yeah, pillows, cushion covers, Patricia. So only sewing squares of fabric together. Oh, Sarah says, if you have a library, I can be the curator. I'll put that on my CV. Occupation, curator of a fabric library. Mm. So the, the outer bag has been pushed inside the lining. And then that goes together. At least I've still got that duck somewhere. Sure, I've still got it somewhere. I never throw anything away. Um, let's line up the side seams. And we'll sew all the way around the top. So if you have a free arm on your sewing machine, <clears throat> show me, yeah, have a look. Have a look at the kids' videos. Um, I don't think I've got the cushion cover here, to be honest. Let me have a look. Yes, I have, but it's over there. And I'm over here. And I'm tied up. It's an envelope back cushion cover. Um, if you have a look, so have a look on my YouTube channel. Um, I actually made it with superhero fabric, which you may not want to use if you're making it for yourself, but it's a really simple cushion cover with no zip or anything. So good place to start. Right, this is quite bulky. And you tend to find when you're using um, waddings and things, particularly when the wadding is touching the presser foot it, it kind of creates a bit of friction and slows the machine down a bit so i'm easing the fabric through i'm not pulling it i'm just helping it through under the under the presser foot i'm just so oh i didn't leave a gap did i that's that's your fault having me talking away and chattering yattering as i was told forgot to leave a turning gap. And nobody pointed this out. What did you like? I normally get them in. You forgot the turning gap. Oh, no. Nobody noticed. Six-year-old friend followed the kids' cushion cover video. Oh, that's nice, Angela. <laughs> I'm just going to make a hole in the bottom so I can turn it the right side out. Um, that, that was the plan all along. See, leave a gap in, in the bottom of about, I don't know, three, three or four inches, just enough to pull the bag through. Shona, I'm glad you like them. Thank you for that. Not sunny in Norfolk. It's not here really, but it's still quite quite mild. It's I think it's warm enough to sit out. I sat outside yesterday. Had my uh, my oldest lad popped over in between jobs which is quite nice nice to see people again isn't it <laughs> oh you did notice oh okay you've just been too polite well it's not something you can not realize is it really when you come to not being able to turn the bag the right side out Sarah I'm glad thank you let's pull all this through we go and then we'll need to sew so the old closed so we have that let's fold the edges of that hole over together and just sew straight across so that's the gap that I I should have left when I was sewing but you know got talking didn't we oh the yattering club Bernadette I like that <laughs> a bit of sewing and yatter Right. Should call it the Nevermind the Yatta Club. Right, how are you going to turn? Yeah, I know, Erica. Let's push the lining inside the bag. I tell you what, um, on I keep telling you. Hopefully, this is sinking in. We're having a sale on the website on Saturday. Um, I didn't tell you as well. I said I did tell you that it's going to be all fat quarters and pre-cuts, ten percent off. That means twenty percent for club members. Um, there won't be a code or anything to put onto the website. Um, we're going to actually create a whole ten percent off section. 
so you can go and have a look what's on there um yeah kim's been so let's let's get rid of some of this stock and she's been buying in fact quarters so it's not old stock it's brand new um especially for you because we fancy the sale oh that's got oh no oh well, hopefully that's a heat erasable um so i've got a blue mark on it so i'm hoping it's just that pen oh yes um but i've also i've got two boxes like goodie boxes to give away which are i haven't got one down here with me but they're about that big full of things that i've been given from clover and core bonds so lots of bits and bobs all, all sewing related bits and bobs so i've got two of those we're going to give away um in a prize draw to somebody who's who's bought in the sale on saturday i have two core bond um they call them knitting bags but i haven't got those either what am i like oh um there's there's let me go through this one let me see if i can if i can move around without pulling off oh my microphone there we go we have a sewing machine bag to give away there's one of those not sure what color it's going to be but it, you'll we're giving away one of these um and the knitting bags are kind of half the size i use them for storage we've got two of those to give away and i've got a whole box full of things that i've made in these live sessions this one will be included and that will be a giveaway as well so that will be oh what have i done there um so i've just touched something and the website's disappeared sorry sarah she's back um yeah i've got lots and lots of makes so and some all, anybody that buys something in the sale on Saturday will be put into a prize draw. Kimberly does one of these things that where they they can computer generate names, so they'll be picked out at random. I'll give you more information on Saturday morning when we do the live at eleven o'clock, um, and show you the prizes and everything that we're going to give away. So it's not just sale; it's going to be giveaways as well. But I've, I've literally got a box just full of samples that this one will be going into too. It's gonna be a fun day. I might see. If, I might. Sure, she is Sunday. I might see if I can squeeze another live in on Sunday. I'll see what the plans are. Okay, so that's where we are with the bag. I'm just going to top stitch around the top now. So with the let's take this off with the flap up and start at the back. And I'm just going to sew. quite close to that seam make sure the lining and the flap are pulled away from each other and we'll sew all the way around so make sure the handles are facing upwards I've just got a thread on there I want to chop off because somebody's, somebody's going to win this so better make it nice I don't know we shall endeavor to be on Facebook YouTube and the website again on Saturday morning. Seems to have worked okay today. We've had a few problems over the last few weeks. Oh, bye, Chris. Hugs, Liz and Debbie. Hugs to you too. It'll be, yes, surely the sale is all day Saturday and all day Sunday. Um, let's say, because we haven't picked a time yet, and I know it's going to be busy right from the off, isn't it? um eight o'clock i'm going to say on saturday morning we'll start the sale i hope that's it kim is that all right if you're watching is eight, text me let me know eight o'clock's all right and that will be all the way through until eight o'clock on sunday night that's an executive decision i've just made um but i would suggest you get in early the way things have been going right take it a little bit slowly as you go over the the handles because there's a lot of bulk there let's take this off oh thank you denise that's very sweet of you to say oh, it's eight o'clock too early do you want to make it nine o'clock it doesn't really matter to me everything will be set up and ready to go it's just um just getting it going oh and satis says deirdre <laughs> no the card's not crying Lee, so it's getting excited it's, do you remember your flexible friend when my credit cards first came out it was um 
Oh, what were they? There was um, before American Express. I'm sure there was one that, w that they s that used to advertise as your flexible friend. I can't remember what it was called. Thanks. Um, okay, that's done. We'll just cut these. I don't mind these little threads everywhere. So there we go. That's how it fastens. So it's kind of it's a nice messenger bag kind of size. Hello, Kathy in Johannesburg. Thank you. Two pouch pockets on the inside there. Again, you can put more in there if you want to. Um, I do like to put dividers in there because you can imagine if that wasn't sewn down the middle, it would just flap around. Um, so it's nice to have that divided. Loads of room in there. And then you've got the zip po pocket on the front and that opens up. And that's really annoying me. So I'm just going to give that a press to take that little crease away. Uh, access, that was it. Access your flexible friend. Oh, that's coming back some, isn't it? Mind you, I can remember um, when, the inter when the internet first came out. I remember all those years ago. Um, and I was, um, I was modelling at the time and I was doing a job, can't remember where, and they, they had the internet at the studio. And um, I can remember the guy saying it's really impressive because you can put anything into the search engine and it comes up with hundreds of answers. Hundreds! It's like billions now, isn't it? Who'd have thought? Okay, so that's better. That cre I'll show you. Look, uh, press the little crease out so it's nice and square. And that fastens over like that. So you've hidden the pocket. And that's the bag done. So again, I will do one for YouTube at some point. I don't know when that'll be. Um, but hopefully over the weekend or maybe early next week. Um, so thank you very much, Claudia. Thank you, Sarah. Has it been an hour? It's been an hour and a half. It's been, it has happened. I better go. I'm my daughter's assistant today, so she'll be she'll be tapping her fingers. Where are you, mother? Um, just see who's on the website. Put you over there. <laughs> oh, oh, Brian, blessed. The skin tight green shiny bodysuit, that wasn't me. With Brian, I was wearing a striping miniskirt with Brian Blessed when I sat on his shoulders. He's a very strong guy. Um, have I ever worn a bright green shiny? They probably have, probably have. Um, oh, well, Olive's going to miss Saturday. Not to worry, we'll have a cash up the next week. Um, okay, then, so. Um, Hopefully see you on Saturday morning. We're, we shall, we'll keep it at eight o'clock for the sale to start, if that's okay. Um, oh, thank you, Dot. Sitting in the sun. Um, so I'll see you on Saturday morning if you're there at 11 o'clock. That's all right, Susan. Glad you enjoyed it. Um, the chatty show. Thanks, Marilyn. Yeah, oh, yes. Thank you, Con uh, Connie. Um, next week's going to be four o'clock. So it was, actually, we did a bit of a poll last week to see what was going to be the best time for everybody. Um, because I know we have a lot of people watching in a... Um, oh, thanks, Hazel. Thanks oh, thanks for staying up. Or have you got up? Um, I, don't, I don't think it's going to help you, the Anns and Hazels. <laughs> Annika Rice. No, not, not Annika Rice, no. Um, yeah, it doesn't help me in Australia, but we have an awful lot of people watching in um, in America. So it was it was an outstanding. Um, yes, we want to be four o'clock in the afternoon on a Wednesday, um, and to be honest, it helps me a bit as well because it means I've got a whole day's work. Where at, at the moment when I, I I prep before the show and then it's too late to work afterwards, so it's kind of it's going to be better for me at four o'clock as well. So I hope that's okay for you. So Saturday will be eleven o'clock in the morning still. Um, and then next Wednesday at four o'clock, and it'll be Wednesdays going forward at four o'clock. So thank you, thanks, thanks for that. Um, with her round bottom, is that Annika Rice? Um, oh, enjoy your day with your granddaughter, Angela. Right, I, I, sh I should go because I just end up chatting for ages now. Um, but it's been lovely to have your company, and um, I hope you I hope you like the demo. I hope you like making your bag, and I can't wait to see your pictures if you can post them on Facebook. And uh, and you take care. I shall see you again on Saturday morning. Bye bye.